Hello my sweet potatoes, it's Michelle, and this is everything I ate on my last few days of my 9 day Japan trip. This was the most fun trip I've ever had, and I'm so excited to share the delicious food and memories with you. So let's begin! Today is May 19th, day 7 in Japan. For breakfast, I had a tamago sando and a seaweed onigiri, two of my favorite things from Family Mart. And because I had some time to kill before meeting up with a friend later, I stopped by a nearby Starbucks at 9am. I ordered an iced americano and found a seat upstairs to do some work. I was working on editing a new video, and in Japan, it's common for food establishments to tell you to find a seat before you place an order, especially if it's crowded and you plan to dine in. Luckily, Japan is really safe and trustworthy, so even if you're by yourself, you can leave one of your belongings like a water bottle, umbrella, or I've even seen people just leave their entire bag or purse on the table to hold their seat while they go back to the counter to order. So after working for about an hour and a half, I headed over to Kisaburo Farm at 11am to meet up with one of my best friends Kaylee for lunch. Kisaburo Farm is known for their wide assortment of eggs, which you can eat raw. I wouldn't really recommend eating raw eggs if you're in the US, but in Japan it is much safer to do so. I ordered their all-you-can-eat raw egg buffet and got to choose from about 8 different types of eggs. I got a yukake egg, which is their signature rich and creamy egg, a rice egg, which was really sweet and had a really white yolk color, and a yuzu egg, which has a hint of yuzu flavor since the food that these chickens are fed are enriched with yuzu peels. You can just crack the egg on top of some rice, add in some soy sauce, mix it together, and eat it like so. And this type of dish is called tamago kake gohan, TKG for short, and it means raw egg over rice. It's so delicious. My favorite egg was the yukake egg because it was so sweet and flavorful, but the yuzu egg is also worth a try since it's so unique and you can definitely taste the yuzu in it. After we wanted to do some shopping, so we headed over to the Mega Don Quixote in Shibuya. It's a huge 7 story discount store with literally anything you need. They also have a food stand selling these 10 yen cheese coins. It's filled with melted cheese and the batter is crispy on the outside and tasted just like a waffle. The cheese pool was crazy on this and it tasted really good too. It only looks like a 10 yen coin though, it actually costs 500 yen, but it's so worth it. Then for dinner, we stayed in Shibuya and went to Mawashi Zushi Katsumidori. It's inside the Seibu Shibuya building and it's a revolving sushi restaurant. These types of restaurants are always so much fun. You can either pick your sushi from the conveyor belt or place an order from the iPad at your seat. Usually the iPad has a wider selection so I typically just order from there. I got the hamachi, miso garlic salmon, seared scallop, assorted fatty tuna, and salmon with pesto and cream cheese, which sounds really weird, but it was actually pretty good. On the way back to my hotel, I stopped by a music store. They have such a huge selection, but I mainly came in to find a DVD for my mom. She really likes this Japanese boy band, Be First, so I'm really glad that I found this for her. The next day, I headed out around 9am to meet up with Kaylee again, but this time at the Starbucks Reserve Roastery. It's a huge building with so much to see and do. There are four floors filled with coffee, tea, food, and you can even get a glimpse into their roasting process. It's kind of like a more grand and upscale Starbucks. There's even a bar on one of the floors. But there's truly so much to see here. I even saw tour groups here, like it's that big. The prices are more expensive compared to regular Starbucks, but their offerings are much more unique here. We got the matcha cream soda, a matcha latte, baked eggs, and a prosciutto sandwich. Everything honestly tasted so good. My favorites were the cream soda, even though I usually don't care for drinks like this because they feel really heavy and sugary, but this one was surprisingly light and not overly sweet. And the baked eggs were so good too. There were mushrooms in it with this savory tomato sauce and it was just so yummy. After, I headed over to Ginza where I was staying and I did a bit more shopping. It was a Saturday and they closed the roads on the weekend so people can just walk on the streets, so that was cool. And I stopped by Don Quixote and found some Kit Kat flavors that I hadn't seen before, so I picked up a few packs to give as gifts and to try myself. I also stopped by Three Coins, which is a household goods store, and most items here are 300 yen, hence the name Three Coins. They have so many cute products, it kind of reminded me of a mix of Daiso and Muji, like the affordability of Daiso paired with the minimal aesthetic of Muji. After chilling at the hotel for a bit, I headed out again and went to Takeshita Street in Harajuku. I haven't been here in over 10 years, so this felt really nostalgic for me. It was just really crowded, which I was expecting since it was a weekend, and I was a bit more tired than I realized, so I couldn't really brave the crowds as much as I thought I could. So I looked around a little bit, but didn't stay for very long. But then my next stop was Ikebukuro. I took the train from Harajuku Station, and this was the most crowded train I've ever been on. If you've ever seen videos of crowded trains in Japan, where people are pushing each other to squeeze inside like sardines, 
scenes, that is exactly what this was like. It was crazy to have experienced that, but it only lasted for like one stop, so it was fine afterwards. Once I made it to Ikebukuro, I met up with my boyfriend and our friend for dinner at Gyukatsu Motomura. Gyukatsu Motomura serves the most tender beef cutlets that you cook yourself on these small grills. The set comes with a variety of side dishes and sauces. The katsu was also so juicy and it just melted in your mouth. This was one of the best meals I had in Japan. We also only had to wait about 5 minutes in line. I've heard some people wait hours to eat here, but luckily we didn't really have to wait even at 6pm on a Saturday. So try coming to the Ikebukuro location if you want to try this place without a long wait. Then we took a short walk over to Sunshine City, which is a huge shopping complex. There are so many stores and restaurants here, but there's even an aquarium, planetarium, museum, and a theater in here. Like this place is huge. We stopped by at this cafe and got Kremia ice cream for dessert. I liked how the cone wasn't like a typical waffle cone, it was more like a butter cookie, so it was really soft. But the ice cream had a cream cheese flavor, which was kind of weird for me, and it also melted really fast. So overall, I'd give it a 7 out of 10. I also stopped by the Rilakkuma store and saw this adorable Rilakkuma tote bag. Do I need more tote bags in my life? No. But did I buy this one? You bet I did. There's also this huge gachapon store with thousands of gachapon machines. And of course we had to play a few, so we won these sea animal pancake keychains and pom pom pudding pouches. So cute. The next day was our last day in Tokyo. I was so sad to leave. We packed up in the morning and checked out of the hotel at 10am. Then we rode the train to Narita airport and got there around 12pm. We passed by a Starbucks and I needed to stop and get the Melon of Melon Frappuccino one last time before we left Japan. I mentioned this in a few vlogs back, but this is my new favorite drink. It's just so refreshing and I love the little melon bits at the bottom and it's only available in Japan. So I had to get it one more time before we left. We also grabbed a quick lunch at McDonald's. We got the ebi fileo, which is like the fish fileo but with shrimp. And it's delicious. Just look at the juicy shrimp pieces. I love trying chain restaurants like McDonald's and Starbucks in different countries because their selection is always so different and it's just fun to try their unique menu items. Then I did a bit more shopping for snacks, found these Tokyo banana Kit Kats that I had to take home and try, and then we spent a few hours at the Narita Airport lounge. You do have to pay to enter, but it was nice to have a less crowded space to relax in. We helped ourselves to their free drinks and snacks, and they do serve other foods and meals as well, but you have to pay an extra fee. And before we knew it, it was time to board. We flew Zip Air back to San Jose Airport and then took BART back home to San Francisco. And that concludes the Japan Diaries. This was such a special trip for me and I hope you enjoyed reliving the memories with me. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and I will see you in my next video. Bye!